My name is Joe Petroniak. I'm a CPA CGA and I've been with Bass Business Solutions for over seven years. And, I'm, and like Freddie mentioned, I am the Sage and Tech Practice Co-Lead. And, uh, and in today's session, we will be looking at managing your multi-entity environment. Whether you have a, have multiple entities currently or, or a single entity with plans to add more for legal protection, and you likely know the headaches involved in with multi-entity management and may experience them firsthand each month if you're relying on spreadsheets and multi-instance systems for consolidations. This session will show you how you can manage your multiple entities all in one environment. So today, what I would like to guide you through the multi-management, through the management of a multi-entity environment within your Sage Intact system. We will see how, how quickly it is to add new entities, how Sage handles, how Sage Intact handles inter-entity transactions and eliminations as well as how to cons cons consolidate continuously to cut days or even weeks off your close, as well as enhance your financial vis visibility at any level. A multi-entity shared environment in, in the cloud saves you time. You don't have to log in to multiple entities. You could log in at the top level. You have a role or user-based access to entities and can seamlessly move between them and view the ones you need. That way you can run your reports, transactions, or processes at, at the consolidated or local level within a single login. So when we're adding a new entity, it's very quickly, you can add it within minutes. You, so what you'll do is you'll create a new entity, update your user restrictions, create a new GL accounts for any cash and inter-entity transactions, map those accounts accordingly to, to each entity, create the checking accounts, update the groups if necessary, and then off you go. You can begin now using your, your, the system out of the, out of the box. So let's jump in into, into a Sage Intact environment and look at how all this is done. So I'm signed in to my, into my demo company and right along the top, as you can see, we have the little drop down. So I've got my top level, so I know which level I'm, I am signed into. If I've had only access, and then also on the on the drop down, we have access to all the entities that are with, built with built in within the system currently. So we have two U.S. companies, a hold co, a Canadian company, a U.K. company, Australian, South African, and, and a Swedish company. At this level here, as as the CFO with the global view, I can see my whole all my entities, all the results of all my all my entities within within my dashboard. Adding a new entity, if I would need to add a new entity, it is simple as sliding into my company, going to my setup, and just press the plus sign to add a new entity. We'll enter an entity ID, give it a name, a tax solution, if, if you do have a tax solution. So if it's a Canadian company, we'll pick up that Canadian tax solution or any, any out of the box uh, solutions that are available that you have, have subscribed to. Operating company and so on down the, down the list. That's it. Set up the company, and you are ready to ready to use, uh, ready to create the ent entries into that into that entity. That is how easy it is. To get some of the more complicated information in there, especially if there are transactions that that affect inter entity, we do have inter entity mapping available to you. So this is where you map what what are my do tos and do froms from between the two entities involved. So let's show you how we could create, uh, how it handles those inter-entity transactions and what happens at, in, in the, uh, within the general ledger system. So if you go slide over into my journals here, let's go and create, quickly go and create one. And then we'll go into my general journal here. Let's go add, click on here, let's add a journal. And I do, did, did, did create one here. So here's a here's a sample one with a multi-currency single entity. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, multi-currency based transactions. We could view that when we create those transactions within the system. We'll you will you will post these, and what the system will do in the back back end, it'll create all our, all our do tos and do froms. So if we want to see that live, let's go quickly create a very quick transaction in here. Let's add. We'll ignore the tax implications. So all we do on, on the location dropdown, we'll pick our pick our entity, pick our any mandatory other fields, our debit amount, 
and then maybe we're going to transfer it across to the US to the other other entity again. One thousand dollars. So those those are one entity to another entity. Let's post this transaction. Oops, sorry about that. Forgot something here. And then once you post that transaction, the sample we edit this. If you view or edit this transaction, what we'll see is what we've keyed in and what the system has done. It's had has processed for us, so it it creates those do to and do from transactions for us automatically. Also, what this allows us to do, uh, so within the uh, our next our next point of point of topic that we will look at is our consolidations. So the system allow us to do consolidations also uh, at the top level to when we're creating those transactions. When we're doing a consolidation, we could run a consolidation. We'll do our setup. We'll look at our different books that we're, we're setting up. So here is a sample right in here, global consolidation into Canadian dollars. We'll pick the book. We'll give it. We'll give it a, a description. Uh, we'll do our netting accounts uh, for our, our cumulative translation adjustments, uh, and then we're going to pick the entities that we want to consolidate. And which dimensions do we want to bring across? Uh, we're, we're just, for now, we're bringing in a location and department. We'll, some journal entries that will get created, different journals uh, hitting different books as well. We also have other books as well. So we have a 606 book, an allocations book, and a, and a digital board book that we want to, want to bring into our consolidation. We have the option to override uh, based on historical or uh, if we want a historical rate, if we want an end spot rate or weighted average on specific GL accounts, we can always set that up on the accounts to override. And on the elimination accounts, which accounts are we eliminating? If uh, out of the, it'll look at the in, into entity transaction accounts as automatically, how they're set up, they'll, they'll be populated here. If there's any other ent entity transactions, any GL account, other GL trans accounts that we want to um, eliminate, we could set that up as well. And once we save that, we are ready to go and run this consolidation. Running this consolidation is very quite easy. We're just going to go in, run a consolidation, pick our time frame and consolidate. We could consolidate with options. So if we wanted to change our ending spot rate or average, average uh, weighted average rate, we could definitely do this at this point. And off you go and consolidate now. The system will go in, do the consolidations, do the elimination, eliminating entries, and your consolidation is done. You can also set up recurrences. So now you could recur, you could create rec a recurring consolidation where now you can consolidate on a daily basis, say every day until some other uh, until some time in a month. And when do we want to start that on? Maybe we want to start running that on with, after the fifth days of, of the five days of the period end, and the system will, will continue on and do a consolidation on a daily basis. And you're ready to look at those reports on a daily basis, those those consolidated accounts. So that's running them on demand or you can like say or you could create them as as a recurrence once you consolidate it so that will, what that provides us for us is reporting into the system so now we could run our reports on our consolidated we could pick the consolidation consolidated that we want pick the date that we want And now we now we have the consolidated financial statements in Canadian dollars. We can see all the entries along the top. So a nice, very powerful tool that we could use all because of that multi-entity multi-entity environment and being able to consolidate uh, as as needed. Not only do we get to those reports, we can also have those reports created on our dashboards. So if we look at our dashboards, we'll go into a role-based here. There's a multi-entity consolidation. So now we're now we're running this report. We have these reports as of, I'll, I'll do these as of 2017, 2019. 
apply. And now we have full access to our to all our to all our consolidated financial reports broken up by entity and however we want it. We will do more filtering if you wanted to look at at the Canadian company in US dollars, we could definitely do that as well. Here's our here's our consolidated balance sheet of our Canadian of our Canadian company in US dollars. Or if you wanted to have others, we could also look look at any other any other GL account group account groupings that we, that we would like to see. Are, the, are there any questions at this level for the time being? Yeah, I can see in the chat, there's a question. Okay, so would you like to answer the question right now or? Yeah, sure. If there's any questions, I'll be happy, more than happy to answer them. Yeah, so can we consolidate financials with partial ownership that is non-controlling interest. Yes, actually, thank you very much, Party, for that question. Yes, uh, Sage Impact has now introduced uh, within the latest release, which is a couple months ago, a couple a couple weeks ago, with a partial ownership trans, uh, consolidation. So we now now are able to consolidate our creative consolidation structure based on uh, on settings. So we could actually set our um, our partial ownerships, assign those partial ownerships to different uh, to the different entities, and the system will will arm and consolidate those transactions. It is limited to uh, to a specific to a true consolidate to a full consolidation. It will also uh, set up the um, the non non controlling interest structure as well. So we we create that structure, assign it, and then uh, and 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 go from there. So let me do it. So the advanced ownership consolidations, which is new, it'll save you time, improve decision making uh, with automatic roll up, and we can we and now we'll be able to handle this the fund percent ownership, partial ownership, all right down to whatever, whatever level that that you would need to. So that is now part of the uh, part of the uh, uh, part of the, the uh, subscription now. So please, if you have any any questions regards to that, and you you would be interested in that, please contact your your executive associate for that. So once again, we have we have looked at how easy it is within Sage Intact to create a new entity. So click on Add, and off off we go. Create that entity, and now you can start using that entity. We could handle the inter-entity transactions within the system by setting up the proper mapping, setting up the proper GL accounts, and and we're ready to use the system. In regards to consolidations, consolidations are out of the box with your, with your consolidation subscription. We could create as many books as we want, as many structures as we want within the system, and uh, <clears throat> and, and do the do the proper recording reporting as, uh, that is related to that. Also on the dashboards, we could definitely also as well create those dashboards that give you that full insight into the system and and with full drill down capability into those transactions. So that about wraps up what I wanted to, to cover off in regards to multi-entity, managing those multi-entities within the system. Uh, number one, how easy it is to create those entities, create those inter-entity transactions, do the consolidations, and show those show the reporting on the system.